Okay, so let's go ahead and start trying to build this fortune cookie uh, website. So the first little baby step I think we can take is every fortune cookie usually says like your fortune and then underneath it says uh, often you, your lucky numbers, pick some lucky numbers. So that actually seems easier. So let's just start by making a page that every time you visit it, it says your lucky number, it's just one number we'll say for now, your lucky number is blank and, and it'll say 17 or 92 or something. So to start with that, I'm just gonna first of all, just do the text, your lucky number plus pretending we have a variable there, which we don't, so it's not gonna work, but let's go backwards and make one. And for now, I'll just say it's four, just to get something on the page. Oh no, an error. Of course, so a uh, good lesson here is that if you get some kind of a runtime error, you will be able to the, uh, the browser's going to show it for you. And so here, the problem is we're trying to concatenate string and in objects. So can anyone see? Hopefully you can see uh, what the problem is. The problem is I need to cast this to a string. So I could do that here, or I could do this here. But this is a number, so if we're going to try to concatenate it with a string, we need to turn it into a string. And you should be familiar with this from Unit one, just because we're on the web doesn't mean these other, you know, these same uh, problems, problem solving and data types that still matter even in this new context. So this is it's an important thing to remember is this is just Python. There's nothing, there's nothing here that isn't just plain old Python. So that should hopefully be comforting. Even in this new context, you can solve these problems. So. Presumably, I did it. I did it. Look at that. It's a four. So now, obviously, instead of hard coding the number four, we want a random number. So we can use the random module. So I'm going to import that here. And random has a method called randint, which you pass it a number. Uh, range and it'll give you anything in that range. So I'll do between 1 and 100 and now we should see a different number every time. Beautiful. So already here this is your our first uh, example of a dynamic website. Every time the user visits it we dynamically decide what the content's going to look like. And it's nothing too crazy. It's just a number that changes, but but um, the principle can extend infinitely to, to do whatever we want it to do. So just to, to um, review, again, we're just talking about normal Python here. So we make a variable, and we use the random module, and we set it equal to a number that's randomly chosen between 1 and 100. And then we just build a string that includes that number and then we send that off into our response and I haven't actually talked about all this stuff yet and I will get to that but for now let's go ahead and build out a little bit more um, structure and HTML in into the content that we're sending over so for example let's maybe have before this let's just have a header with like the name of our site. So I'm going to make put put that in a string. Header equals. I'm going to give it an h1 tag and the word fortune cookie. And close the tag, and then this part I'm going to actually pull out into an into a variable. So I'll say. Um, what should we call this? Let's call this uh, number 
sentence in our response can be not only the number sentence but also the header. So now the total thing is going to be a big string that starts with this h1 portion cookie and then talks about the lucky number. So let's go visit our page now and hopefully we should see the same thing but with a with a header above it. Great. And actually, this might be useful. Let's take a look at the structure of our page in the inspector. So you can see here we have all the basic skeleton elements of an HTML page. We have the HTML node at the very root level within which we have a head and a body. And within that is the content that we created ourselves. Um, and so here's our title in an h1 tag, and here's our content, which is not inside of a tag, and we should probably do something about that, but for now just notice that the, te the string we returned here did in fact turn into uh, HTML. An interesting thing you might have noticed is, but what about, we never explicitly had to define the head and the body in the HTML node, and that is true. Um, so it turns out if you just send over some content, the browser by default is going to assume that you want HTML, and if it doesn't see those tags, it's going to make them itself. So that's kind of nice that the browser can do that for us. So let's do a little more now. I'm going to put this, let's put this inside of a tag, so maybe a p tag paragraph. So I'll say, I'll just make a new variable again, so number paragraph graph equals p plus number sentence plus closing p. And then instead of this being the sentence, we want this to be the paragraph. So nothing crazy that I'm doing here. I'm just making some Python variables and concatenating strings together to represent the HTML. And if we refresh again, it looks the same, but if I inspect here, you can now see that this is this content is wrapped in a paragraph. 